we will have the keynote lecture by uh, Professor Sehyun Kim, a novel multidisciplinary approach of transoral robotic surgery for the treatment of T3, T4 pharyngolaryngeal cancer. And Professor Kim will be presented by Professor Giuseppe Spriano. It's indeed a great uh, pleasure, honor, and privilege for me to introduce to you Professor Sehyun Kim. He's actually professor and chairman and director of the Department of Otolaryngology and Endocrine Surgery in Yonsei University College of Medicine and director of Yonsei at the Neck Cancer Center in Yonsei Cancer Hospital in Seoul, Korea. And uh, this briefly, his uh, steps professional steps, graduated in uh, 1988, received the academic degree, Master of Science uh, in uh, 95, in 2000, uh, my, uh, academic degree of physician, for, always from Johnson University. You see here the postgraduate uh, training in Seoul, and even the military service as captain of the harm. And uh, he had also uh, training abroad, uh, of course, in Tokyo, as well as a memorial in New York, University of Pennsylvania, and Penn University. And these are the academic appointment. And uh, until 2000, since 2011, is a professor of uh, otolaryngology and director of uh, Cancer Center, and uh, starting from March 2016, Chairman and Director of the Department of Otolaryngology. He has contributed to the professional society. You see here the role in Director and General Secretary, and he is the President-elect of Korean Society of Adenic Surgery, that is one of the most active at an exercise in the world. And uh, if you look in literature, he has uh, 24 papers on uh, robotic surgery in literature. And finally, I am the privilege to be considered one uh, of a friend of his. Please, Seon, podium is yours for your keynote lecture. Thank you for a uh, kind introduction, uh, Professor Spriano. Uh, can I have my slide, please? I will talking about the uh, novel multidisciplinary approach of the tools for the treatment of the, uh, the T3, T4, or laryngopharyngeal cancer. Uh, before my talking, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Professor Marcelo Figari to giving me a wonderful chance to present uh, my work uh, and also congratulate such a big success and wonderful meeting. Also, I would like to express my deep gratitude to uh, the Dr. Shah. Uh, I run the head and neck surgery from him. I, I, I run the head surgery philosophy from him and um, he is uh, my mentor and he is my role model. Uh, why TORS? There is a laser surgery, endoscopic surgery is popular, but why TORS? This is a laser surgery because microscope is outside the patient mouth. Because of the line of sight, you can see only magnification of line of sight view like that. But TORS is different. TORS introduced the endoscope intra-regionally. So, this is your surgical view. You can see whole structures of your surgical view. If you change the endoscope 30 degree, you can see the other side of the region like that. This is the merit of the, uh, the torus. Uh, we started the torus uh, at, in, in 2008, uh, exactly 10 years ago, and uh, this is a mitose surgery, uh, the picture. 
It's the first case is a hypopharyngeal cancer, and fortunately, I'm a lucky surgeon. Fortunately, this patient is still alive with uh, uh, no evidence of disease. And uh, um, we running there, uh, the International Robotic Surgery Symposium in 2011. So let me just briefly introduce the advantage of a TORS. Look at this patient, 31 years old, young woman, T2 tonsil cancer. The problem is retropharyngeal load contact to the internal carotid artery. It's uh, the highly located lateral portion of the retropharyngeal load. This is, uh, we call it the node of Lubiere. To approach the node of Lubiere is uh, uh, very difficult and the result many functional mobility. But using the tools, we can solve this problem. Uh, this is uh, the conventional lateral autopharyngectomy procedure. Um, I cut the posterior pharyngeal wall and elevate. This is a parapharyngeal pad. This is a medial pterygoid muscle. So lateral to medial dissection around bucopharyngeal fascia, medial to lateral dissection around the prevertebral fascia, and this strip. Uh, I cannot say the full procedure of the, uh, the lateral pharyngectomy. But anyway, uh, this is uh, the stylopharyngeal muscle. You know, retropharyngeal lymph node is located between the bucopharyngeal and the prevertebral fascia. So after retro pharyngectomy, if you follow underneath the stylopharyngeal muscle, you can easily find the retropharyngeal lymph node, like here. But keep in mind, the lateral portion of the lateral pharyngeal lymph node is contact to the internal carotid artery. So I use uh, the bipolar quartering, non user monopolar, because manage the, any small vessels from the internal carotid artery like that. So bipolar quartering system, we can nicely remove the retropharyngeal lymph node like that. And uh, this is a stylopharyngeal muscle. Uh, just underneath the stylopharyngeal muscle, you can see the palpation of the internal carotid artery over here. So that's the merit of the transoral robotic surgery. This is a poster follow-up, four years later, poster follow-up. And the other case, space of tongue cancer. Can you see the region here? Main region is located the left side. But the problem is cross the midline and involve the contralateral right side. How do you manage this patient? Maybe more than 90% surgeons and this patient to chemo RT uh, the arm. But uh, using the tools, actually um, nowadays I usually use the new robotic system, XI system. So um, this is a, a much, much um, more uh, advantage over the old system. Anyway, so I needed to save the, uh, the right side. Right side, even though the region crossed the midline, right side infiltration depth is shallow, so I have to save the right lingual artery, contralateral lingual artery. But left side is a main region side, so we need to enop basal margin. So we have to include the intrinsic and extrinsic muscle of the base of tongue, like a hyogrossus or a geniogrossus muscle, like that. So we need to find out the lingual artery and find out the hyoid bone to extirpate the uh, extrinsic and intrinsic muscle of the region side. Here is a, a quick can palpate the hyoid bone, and uh, this is a hyoid bone. So that means we extirpate the whole compartment of the base of tongue tumor existing area. And see the specimen, the how generous basal margin is. And this is a denuded, the epigrotis, the mucosal margin for the, uh, the mucosal margin. So TOS enables us this kind of surgery in the, the, the base of tongue cancer, that. And, uh, this is a post of warm ones. Can you see the, how the past healing is? And can you 
audio volume up, please. Audio volume up. The audio volume, please. And this is uh, uh, the poster. So raise the audio volume, please. And this is uh, uh, the swallowing. You know, the functional preservation is um, great. So post up two years. So since 2009, the United States FDA approved the tools. After that, upfront surgical approach in the oropharyngeal cancer is increasing, and many reports said it's a margin control is better than open surgery, and the hospital day, uh, reduced hospital day, and the functional preservation is better than the CCRT, upfront CCRT. Many reports said that. So, uh, from 2009, the upfront surgery case in oropharyngeal cancer is increasing like that. Especially T1, uh, stage 1, and stage 2 cancer, upfront surgery is increasing. And T1, T2 cancer, upfront surgery case is increasing. This is uh, my summarized case of TORS. So, initially, the TORS is, uh, the T1, T2 is an indication for TORS, and uh, this is uh, our, uh, the transoral robotic surgery data in oropharyngeal cancer, and the T1, T2 region shows the 97% five-year survival, and uh, stage one to cancer is uh, the 100%. That means stage one to oropharyngeal cancer is now the controllable disease. And how about the stage three, four, advanced stage? The upfront surgery case is less than 30%. That means 70% patient received the upfront the chemo radiation therapy. So we analyze our data, stage three, four patient. You know, the 2017, the, the AJCC staging system is changed according to the HPV positive status. Anyway, we analyzed that the stage three, four region, this is uh, the previous staging system, uh, shows uh, the 88% of the five-year survivors. So it's, it's a very, very optimistic result in advanced stage cancer. And the interesting thing is our data show that TORS showed a promising result regardless of the presence of the HPV status. Even HPV negative cases, those shows a very, very good result and no uh, statistical significance from the HPV positive case. This result is recently uh, the published. And uh, in the HPV positive case, we analyzed the, uh, our data, including the open surgery and uh, uh, multivariate analysis data shows that the, the AJCC8 uh, addition staging system was the significantly associated with the patient survivor. But look at this. Stage 1, 2 is, is good, acceptable, but stage 3 is the prognosis is dismal. What is the stage 3 in new system? Usually, stage three means T4 region or T3 region. So, this is a T3, T4 region. Upfront surgery of T3, T4 region is less than 10%. 90% patient go to the chemo radiation arm. That's the problem. So we, 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 we searched the, the papers, the result of the T3, T4, uh, the survivor. The T3, T4 survivor in oropharyngeal cancer is less than 50% in upfront chemo radiation arm. What about less than 50%? So that's the problem. This is the current NCCN guideline. They recommend open surgery, chemo radiation, or induction chemotherapy. Induction chemotherapy arm, the problem is after the induction chemotherapy patient who shows the complete remission, the NCCN guideline recommend full dose of radiation or the chemo radiation. Uh, we have a question about this protocol because after the neosbund chemotherapy, the remaining portion of cancer is usually resistant to subsequent radiation therapy. So is this efficient treatment? We have a question. And one report from Italy 
uh, said that uh, the patient who shows the complete remission underwent the, uh, the total laryngectomy or supraorotic laryngectomy and they analyzed the pathologic result. They say that 17% patient shows no viable cancer cell in pathologic specimen. That means the patient who shows the complete remission, 70% of patient receive unnecessary full dose of radiation. So we have uh, the question about this NCCM protocol. So we invent a new uh, the treatment protocol, and we need a breakthrough concept to overcome the 50% of the survival in T3, T4 cancers. So um, this is our protocol, IRB approved since 2014, and this is uh, our Neosbunt chemotherapy regimen. We do not use toxin, because if we use the toxin, the marrow suppression is severe, so you do not proceed the consecutive the surgery. So we need a low toxic and the high efficacy Neosbunt drugs, so we choose the cisplatin and oral 5 FP regimen, it is already approved regimen by Korean FDA. So two day oral 5 FP and one shot of cisplatin is one cycle and we did three cycles of new chemotherapy. After two cycles, we evaluated MRI scan and see the response and we did the transoral robotic surgery and after surgery we have a specimen so we analyze the specimen and we can modulate the post-radiation therapy according individualized modulation of the post-radiation therapy. This is uh, the simple concept of the T3 region after neosbund chemotherapy region shrinked like that. But important thing is doing the tours, we need to extirpate the pre-existing tumor area, not shrinked area. This is a very important concept. And after uh, analyze the, the surgical specimen, we can modulate the, uh, the uh, radiation dose. That means we can minimize, minimize the radiation, post-op radiation dose. The rationale of this protocol is after Neosbund chemotherapy, we extirpate the pre-existing tumor area. So radio resistant clone is the key factor for failure of the upfront CCRT. But by extirpating the radio resistant clone, we can expect more better survival, more better cure rate. And uh, we have a specimen, so we can modulate the post-radiation therapy. We can minimize the radiation dose to the patient. And we can do organ and functional preservation surgery. That's our rationale. This is the pre and the post uh, the neosbund chemotherapy. We enrolled the 37 patient and the mean follow-up is 36 months and we can get a negative margin 70%. Surgery or lung cancer is, is the 16%. And uh, usually patient needs uh, the tracheotomy. We can decannulate uh, within the seven days. Let me show some cases. This is uh, the infiltrative cancer and the carotid artery is sandwiched like that. And uh, um, after the neosbund chemotherapy, you can see the, the region is uh, shrinked dramatically like that. And after that, we extirpate the pre-existing tumor area using the tools. Uh, because time is limited, I uh, skipped uh, some videos, and after that, we extirpate the region. This is uh, bad, and this, see the pathology. There is no viable cancer cell, so we modulate the yeah. post of no, therapy. Like and this patient, like after tumor growth, we can finish the uh, the treatment surgery alone. Look at this patient, T4 patient. Carotid artery is sandwiched by the lymph node and the primary infiltrative region and the contralateral multiple lymph node metastasis. Uh, very difficult to, to treat these cases. After the Neusman chemotherapy, you can see the region is dramatically shrinked. And after that, we apply the tools. 
you can get this kind of surgical view. So cut the superior constrictor muscle like that, and you can easily find out the bucopharyngeal fascia. And um, this is a parapharyngeal path. Along the parapharyngeal path plane, this is a bucopharyngeal fascia. This transverse muscle is the superior constrictor muscle. And they cut the, uh, the soft palate and they cut the posterior pharyngeal wall and uh, elevate the bucopharyngeal fascia lateral to medially like that and elevate the prevertebral fascia medially to uh, laterally. And uh, this called, I called this the Kim's strip, the most medial portion of the parapharyngeal path. In there, most important structures such as stylogrossus, stylopharyngeus muscle is coming, and the many, many numerous vessels uh, comes with the, this stylopharyngeus or stylogrossus muscle. So leaving this strip for the last step and the traction of the tissue, you can see the, uh, the vessel from the parapharyngeal space very well. So you can manage the vessel from the parapharyngeal space very well. If you cut uh, this vessel using only using the electrocautery, the, if the artery, the blood is pumping and you cannot control uh, this vessel without uh, damaging the, this parapharyngeal pad, pad and it makes the exposure of the internal carotid artery. Anyway, uh, the report is very happy, Low, no residual carcinoma, so we can minimize the post-op radiation dose. This is uh, the worst case, T4 region, carotid arteries here. Even, even though you're planning the open surgery, you cannot get the happy result, and you cannot get the negative margin. Uh, in this case, after the, uh, the, uh, the neurosmond chemotherapy, the region is dramatically shrinked, and after that, uh, we extirpate the tumor existing area. Uh, so same procedure is a lateral oropharyngectomy. And uh, you know uh, that this area is the previous tumor existing area. So we can see the, uh, the fibrosis. And we, if we change the scope 30 degree up, you can nicely see the base of tongue area like that and uh, uh, very meticulous, and you can see 10 times more magnified the third three-dimensional view. So uh, your vision is so accurate, and you can decide the tumor margin very, uh, very nicely. This is a tumor bed. And how about the result? No viable tumor cells. So we can Minimize, minimize the radiation dose. No evidence of disease now. This is a postal. Let me show um, some other cases. Base of tongue cancer. Base of tongue cancer involved the higher grossus muscle, extrinsic muscle. We classify this the T4 region. So most surgeons choose the total grossectomy or uh, the upfront CCRT. Uh, we need uh, the complete compartment resection of base of tongue, including the higher grossus muscle and some portions of the genial grossus muscle. So um, if you planning this surgery with a laser wand, this is a lingual artery. You can appreciate the vessel uh, very well using the, uh, the robot endoscope. Uh, this kind of compartment dissection is very, very difficult or even uh, impossible. But using the robot, you can get a very nice surgical view. And this is an uh, artery from the, the superior laryngeal artery. And the denuded the lingual surface of the mucosa. And completely resection of the half portion of the base of tongue, including the extrinsic muscle. The that's the merit of this, uh, the robotic surgery. And this is a post -talk. The His tongue function is normal, and his swallowing is normal, no aspiration. You can see 
you can listen his voice. And the other case is, is uh, the base of tongue cancer, also in extrinsic muscle invasion, typical base of tongue cancer. So this is uh, uh, the video. And uh, we need uh, some portions of the tonsil and the half portion of the base of the tongue. So um, we can use uh, the, the uh, various uh, type of the electoral cautery. Actually, this time, this is uh, the XI machine. XI machine only available for eight millimeter, the instrument. That's the main disadvantage. But anyway, there is no problem using the XI machine. This, can you see this is uh, the lingual artery? Lingual artery, we can easily appreciate the lingual artery. So using the low pull of tonsil and the base of tongue and uh, you know, expose the lingual artery. It's a creeping is not enough. In that case, I recommend strongly the tie of the proximal portion of the lingual artery. So, um, so I tied and I finished the surgery like that. And uh, this is a uh, the post-op of this patient, he saved his tongue function, he can speak normally and he can swallow uh, almost normally and we can minimize the post-op radiation dose. Um, sometimes uh, this tortuous vessel, internal carotid artery is the contraindication for tours. Almost this internal carotid artery is attached to the, this, the, uh, the, uh, the cancer portion. Uh, can, we, can we save the function of this patient? So um, we enroll this patient. This is internal carotid artery, and you can see internal carotid artery is attached to the, uh, the tumor like that. So um, we uh, did the announcement chemotherapy first. Using the uh, endocyan green, this is a fluorescent dye, you can appreciate the best cell more better than uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, endoscopic view because it binds to the, the blood plasma. So, um, let me show how I save the internal carotid artery safely. Uh, same procedure. Maybe around here, tortuous internal carotid artery located, but I don't know if internal carotid artery is the wall is damaged, blood is pumping, and the patient maybe possibility of the table die. So identification of internal carotid artery tortuous portion is very important. Can you see this? It's a pulsating portion of internal carotid. We can uh, identify this vessel very well. So I have convinced that I can identify the best cell, so we can do this kind of surgery. Also, this is a very big tumor, and there is a huge best cells in the, from the external carotid artery system. And this is uh, uh, the poster, uh, the video, now the no evidence of digits. Uh, let me show some interesting cases, uh, the base of tongue cancer, who received the upfront chemo radiation therapy, 17th century radiation therapy already, but tumor record. Um, every head and neck surgeon recommend the total grossectomy and the total laryngectomy because tumor invades the supraglottis. But it's a young woman. Uh, she eagerly wants to save his tongue and the larynx functions. The key is how to save the control lateral, the lingual artery is key portion to save her uh, the tongue function. And uh, unfortunately, she, uh, the P16 is positive, so we enroll uh, this patient to uh, this protocol. And uh, the hyoid portion and the supraglottic portion in the neck dissection, we cut this portion first. And using the tools, we resect this superior and lateral and the medial portion like that, like that. And can, you can see the, uh, the envelope portion of the base of tongue and the supraglottis with saving the contralateral side of the lingual artery because we can see the vessel very well and we can see the tumor margin. If you see the 10 times magnified the surgical view, you can appreciate the normal and abnormal tissue very well. So 
let's see the post op. So how definitely we need uh, the free flap reconstruction in this case, but uh, no mandibulotomy, no total glossectomy, no total laryngectomy. Her tongue function is saved, and the post op one year, and uh, she can move his tongue, and she can speak, and she can swallow. So um, uh, that's for an example. So we enrolled the, uh, our patient uh, uh, after the New Zealand chemotherapy. 92% can be enrolled in this protocol, and there is no local failure. Uh, the cause of this is mainly distance mass or uh, the other causes of disease, and our result is very optimistic. Five years over survival, 78%. And even though the HPV negative case shows the very good result, and the disease-free survival is 80%, the specific survival is 85%. Uh, this data is recently published in the Annals of Surgical Oncology. Uh, let me show some other cases of the uh, laryngo hypopharyngeal cancers. We report many papers about the TORS data and it shows the uh, very good result. But I am focusing on the T3, T4, laryngopharyngeal cancers. Unfortunately, many papers uh, describe the survival about the uh, laryngohypopharyngeal advanced cancer diseases. They, uh, they only describe the stage 3, 4 disease, not for stage uh, the T3, T4 disease. So, see the result. Upfront CCRT, T3, T4 laryngopharyngeal cancer, five years survival is less than 40%. Upfront surgery cases shows the almost uh, better result. But upfront CCLT in T3, T4 is uh, uh, five year survival is uh, less, than, less than 40%. What about uh, 60% in T3, T4 laryngo hypopharyngeal cancers? So we need a breakthrough this survival limitation. So we need uh, novel thinking. Uh, let me show this some cases the, to show the merit of the tours. Adenocystic carcinoma is from the molecular invaded the preoperative space and the base of the tongue. So, razor, uh, it is very difficult to get the margin, endoscope too. But if you're using the tools, you can get the, like this surgical view. So surgery is easy. We need to resect base of tongue, molecular, and the supraglottis. This like that, the compartment resection. TOS enables this kind of surgery. So this is a specimen, and it, we completely extirpate the pre space, base of tongue, and the molecular area. And this is a post of four years. The swallowing is normal. So uh, that's the merit of the transoral robotic surgery. Uh, Supraglottic cancer arising the area purity fold invade the supraglottic portion of the paraglottic space. After Neosbund chemotherapy, you can see the region is shrinked dramatically. And uh, this is a surgical view. Can you see? You can see the whole the larynx and the pharynx hypopharynx, so uh, we need to extirpate the, uh, this is uh, the vessel, the superior laryngeal vessel, extirpate the, the paraglottic space of the supraglottic portion and some portions of the, the piriform sinus portion. The best way to extirpate this soft tissue is uh, this section along the thyroid cartilage. This is a thyroid cartilage. I cut the arytenoid portion. So low limit of this dissection is the ventricle. So this is a thyroid cartilage. Can you see? We nicely extirpate the paraglottic space, soft tissue, piriform sinus tissue, and some portion of the arytenoid, the supraglottic structure, uh, supra, suprastructure of arytenoid. That kind of surgery, ang block compartment resection surgery uh, we pursuing. Uh, this is a post op. This patient, we finished the treatment surgery alone. Swallowing way. One thing obvious is if you save the one cricoarytenoid normal, one cricoarytenoid unit, 
uh, the post operatively the patient speak and the patient eat. After the chemotherapy region is dramatically shrinked like that, and same similar surgery, right, this patient. So along the thyroid cartilage, we extirpate the, the paraboard space tissue like that. And we can get a happy margin, and uh, also we can finish the, the surgery uh, alone in, in this patient. And uh, uh, the swallowing is no aspiration. Let me show another case, the more huge cancer arising in the area purity fold. And can you see the region is shrinked dramatically? And it's, uh, we can do, we can do compartment surgery and the angular surgery like that. So let me skip the, the details of the surgical videos. And this is uh, the postal view. So if you save one cricoaritinoid unit, is that, um, there, don't worry about the patient as post of aspiration of swallowing. Uh, interesting case. Can you imagine the conservation surgery in this case? Maybe not. It's uh, both area purity fold, posterior commission, and post cricoid region involvement, T3 superaortic cancer. And after neosbund chemotherapy, region is shrinked like that. And we can uh, try extirpation of the pre-existing tumor area with the, uh, the paraglotic space and the arytenoid and the post-cricoid region here, like that. And uh, we save his larynx and uh, his swallowing functions. So we uh, enroll the 67 patient and we can uh, enroll the, the uh, transoral robotic surgery in, in 77 patient. And our analysis data, uh, the we can get a negative margin in 73% in laryngeal cancer and 70% in hypopharyngeal cancer. And the surgery alone case, case is the 20% in laryngeal cancer and 30% in hypopharyngeal cancer. The cannulation period takes more time in hypopharyngeal cancer, but uh, more than 85% patient can eat the general diet, and this is uh, the voice analysis data. And our survival shows that T3, T4, over uh, supraglottic and hypopharyngeal cancer is 69%. You know, comparing the 40%, 69% with preserving runnings. This data is with preserving function and preserving runnings. And uh, this is a very uh, the optimistic data. Um, let me show some the hypopharyngeal cancer case. This is uh, the, the similar video, so I, I skipped the uh, video. And this patient uh, maintain his laryngeal functions. So um, many interesting case, but the time is uh, limited. So uh, I will show you in the next time in the Lyme hypopharyngeal cancer case. And anyway, this is a your surgical view. So you can see the region very well. And uh, this kind of the compartment dissection with the paraglotic space and the piriform sinus and including the posterior pharyngeal wall is possible uh, like that, yeah. And this is a uh, angular resection, and see the margin. How the margin is generous. This is uh, the postal view. The healing is very fast. Uh, let me skip these cases. 
And uh, this is also the T3, the code fixation hypopharyngeal cancer in filtrative region and uh, uh, the chemotherapy code mobility is restored and uh, this is a surgical view. Yeah, you can do surgery very well, yeah. So extirpate the region, no residual cancer, so finally he cured. Yeah, he cured. He's supposed to five years later. So another case, T4A case, extra laryngeal extension. There's no way to save the larynx. Only option is this. But after Neusmund chemotherapy, region is dramatically shrinked, and we stopate the pre-existing tumor region like that. And pathology report is there is no evidence of disease. And now he <laughs> saved his larynx. He can speak. He can swallow. <laughs> and he cured. Um, this is uh, the representative uh, case of our the study. We reported this date, data recently in the oral oncology and the annals of surgery. So I do not insist in surgery is everything uh, because multidisciplinary approach is very important. Chemotherapy is important, surgery is important, radiation therapy is important. Most important thing is how to use these three strategies efficiently and appropriately with rational. By doing the Neusbund chemotherapy, we can do the functional and organ preservation surgery. By doing the surgery, we have a specimen. So we can moderate the post-radiation therapy individually. We can minimize the radiation dose. So TORS is uh, something special, but not everything. You know the technology development is very fast. So to apply this technology to head and neck patient is, is our mission, head and neck surgeon's mission. But using the, this updated technologic surgical uh, tool, we can invent this kind of concept. Uh, and we can uh, expect more better survival and more functional preservation surgery. Um, if you choose your next car, maybe you can choose improved, pre-existing, improved uh, the petroleum, uh, the diesel or the gasoline engine car. But if you change your concept, maybe you can choose like uh, uh, this kind of car like a Tesla. It's, uh, the choice is up to you. But what I'm saying is pre-existing NCCN guideline has a limitation. The main limitation is every same treatment to every different tumor. Upfront CCRT, every same treatment to every different tumor. That's the main weak point of pre-existing the protocol and the limitation. So to break through this limitation, we need a more a uh, new concept and more new trial. So I just uh, show one of these new trial and the ideas. Uh, we have hosting the International Robotic Surgery Symposium since 2011, and this year as International Robotic Surgery Symposium will be held in the October 28 and 29, and uh, you are very welcome, and please come and let's share the idea. And thank you, and I appreciate your interest in my presentation. Thank you very much for the magnificent presentation. And this is our recognition as keynote lecturer of the IFNOS 2018.